Hello, and welcome to Introduction to Bioinformatics Analysis, taught by Philip Richmond, section 1-2, getting set up on WestGrid and using Terminal. So Linux, also known as Unix, is an operating system which you can consider similar to Macintosh OS X or Microsoft Windows. It's the primary operating system on servers, so if you plan to analyze data on a server, then you must know how to interact with the Linux environment. Macintosh OS X Terminal is written in the same language, making life easy to communicate between the server and your Mac. If you're on Windows, then you use a different language, and you must install a client in order to translate operations between your computer and the server. So really you can think of the terminal as a way to speak to this larger computer. Usually we interact with uh, our computers and the processors on our computers via graphical user interfaces or GUIs. Anything from Microsoft Word or Mozilla Firefox or even the Finder in OS X, grabbing files and dragging them to the recycle bin. These are all graphical displays of actual commands that we can enter in directly to the computer. Now while some bioinformatics analysis tools are written with this graphical user interface, the vast majority of them will require you to speak directly to the server instead of through a pretty window interface. And this is where the terminal comes in, much like the matrix. So why don't we go ahead and open up a terminal. This is something that we're going to be doing a lot, so I highly recommend making a shortcut to this. Um, and if you're on a PC, then please pause. Actually, you don't really need to come back to this until uh, the second to last slide. And watch the video on opening a terminal on a PC you can get there from the readme on the GitHub website. But if you're on a Mac, then let's simply open the terminal application. And we can do this the first time by clicking up here to Spotlight and typing in Terminal. And the terminal, which is an application, comes up. My window is already customized to my liking. And you can see some of you not, might, not, might not like this yellow. The font might be not preferable. And we can go through a different way, a few different customizations for your terminal. So we'll find one that fits our preferences. We can explore that by typing, by clicking terminal and then going to preferences and we have many different options here on the left and if we want to open any of these different options we can just simply double click them and explore a few different colors schemes some of you might like the black with white this is the one that's most like the matrix we have the one that i have as default this is also one that I've used in the past. You can add transparency to them so that you can still see what's behind you. Uh, there's lots of different customizations and options, and some of you may just want to stay basic for now, which is perfectly okay. If you want to change the default, you can simply click on one and then make it the default. So this is already my default if I wanted to change here. Now that's my default. You can change additional things like the sound. One of the most important things that I always turn off is I go to advanced and I turn off the audible bell because it drives me crazy. You can change the fonts, um, but in general, really just whatever suits your liking. So now I've got a lot of these open. I'm going to close a few of them. And just so that it's easier for you guys to read, I can quickly change the font size by holding Command and hitting Plus. And then 
I will now shut this down. And this should be a font that the rest of you can see. Again, just a couple slides adjusting the character size. And now let's log into Orcanus, our WestGrid compute server. Now we do that by typing in the command, the ssh command. So we're going to type ssh, whatever your username is, at orsonist.westgrid.ca. Now a very important thing that I will mention several times is that whenever I have something flanked by the less than, greater than sign, I want you to replace that with something that actually applies. So my example would be SSH Richmond P, because this is the Westgrid Compute Canada account name that I have, at orsinus.westgrid.ca. So I'll type that now, SSH Richmond P at orsinus.westgrid.ca. And I'll hit enter, and then it'll prompt me for my Westgrid or Compute Canada password, which I will enter now. And now I am logged in to the Westgrid Compute server. There's a nice welcome to UBC Westgrid and a few different resources and documentation that are listed here, as well as a note that on Tuesday, June 14th, there were some issues. So again, this is the server interacting through the terminal and now in the next videos in section 1-3 we can play around in this environment. That is the end of this presentation.